welcome guys in this new video the game engine series hope you guys are healthy now in the previous video we talked about how to create this player right here as you can see he has uh, different types of animation so it was important for me to kind of make a video to show how i created because this player is using a frame animation so we're not using sprite sheet to animate the player we actually have single images that we use to actually create the animation and the player has many animations in place that's why it was important for me to kind of speak about that so that you guys can actually understand because in this game engine we're creating we have two type of animation we have the sprites animation in in, in which we actually have like a sprite sheet with with the grid of images that we can actually you know look through and select a specific part of the image and draw it on the screen to create an effect of animation now the frame animation is something else or the sequence animation is where you have single images and you kind of use each image um, to create the animation in a sense that you create like a, a time between frames that you know that will be used to actually uh, look through those images and show them on the screen and the result is actually nice so if you want to kind of know that if you haven't watched the previous video and you want to know how to make your animation you know uh, to make frame animation with SDL I will simply recommend you to check the videos in the playlist the link will be provided in the link in the description below now in this video we're gonna be talking about how to create guns so in your game and the principle will also be um, uh, you know the same if you want to create a player that is going to be throwing things you know or you know shooting uh, uh, arrows or something like that so the idea is going to be the same and we're going to be seeing how you can create your gun and make your player shoot like here and you have your bullet moving and things like that so before we get started also i simply want to invite you guys to subscribe to medical channel if you haven't and uh, also want to let you know that you can support my work via patreon and you're also gonna get access to the source code of this project and uh, in some case you will be able to actually impact now i have my gun dot uh, my header file right here my file right here that i created it's a single header file class so i didn't want to create a cdp file for that since the implementation wasn't huge so i i thought to myself i'll simply use a header file so you have we, we actually have two classes in this file right here the first class is the bullets class and the second one is the gun so i'm going to be starting with the bullet class so the bullet class actually needs two member variables the velocity you know the speed and the transform since our bullet is going to be a texture so it was important to actually give him like a transform to actually uh, draw it easily on the screen without having to struggle with the fact that we need to redefine the texture and all that kind of stuff so and the constructor takes two parameters two vectors so the position and the velocity the position is actually the initial position where the bullet will start from you know since the, bu the bullet is going to be moving we need to specify where the bullet the bullet should start moving from that's 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 the idea about this variable right here that's why we initialize the transform with the position given and we set the ratio according to the camera to one so the bullet is going to be moving um, with the same speed as the camera actually so and um, yeah we set the texture id so just like that and here we just query that texture from our texture map from the texture manager to get the size of that texture because we don't want to go and check the size of the file and set the value of the width and the height ourselves we can simply do it using our query method that we created passing our texture id and the value of the width and the height will be written inside of my transform width and height now the draw function is straightforward it's the same thing uh, as all other classes we simply pass our transform and the texture manager will make sure the rest is you know deal now we have our move function which is also normal we simply translate the position of our bullets on the x and on the y axis according to the velocity given so if you want to shoot your bullet up the velocity we're gonna is going to be set for up if you want to shoot it shoot it front you know and just like that 
and that's the idea about this and we simply move it we translate it and we multiply the current value with the delta time because we don't want it to move with the frame rate ratio of our computer so we want to make sure the way it move done uh, does does not actually depend on the frame rate you know that's why we make sure we use the delta time now we want to also check if the bullet is already outside of the screen to actually destroy it because if we don't do that we will have a lot of bullet created in the memory of our computer that are not deleted and this will bring some memory leaks later on somehow if you play the game for the long for a long time you will have some problem that's why we have this function right here we simply checks if the transform position if the position of the transform right now is outside of the screen so smaller or greater than the width and the height and all that kind of stuff and this is how the bullet actually uh, works and now we can simply go down here and as I said this is not so different uh, from our engine from our particle engine the idea is to generate some particle make sure they are not they are still alive and destroy them so and here we simply have our constructor for the gun class it takes the number of bullets that we want our uh, gun to have how many bullets it should take the damage we're not using the damage right now but we're simply putting this because it's in point and uh, now this is the reach the, re the the recharge time of our gun of our gun so how how long the gun should take to actually recharge when the bullets are you know finished that's important so we simply initialize the parameters right here the destructor simply clear the munitions and shrink so set the size of the vector to zero and you can see down here we have the damage we have the bullet count we have a variable to check if the gun is currently charging because we want to make sure when the gun is charging to not animate the player for example to not animate the shooting animation by the player we're going to be seeing that later we had the recharge time we have the start recharge so this is actually to tell when we we should start recharging the gun and we have our vector for the munition for, uh, uh, you know for all the the bullets that we're going to be creating now we have this uh, recharge measure so I'm not going to be starting with that I'm going to be starting with draw bullet the idea is to simply run through the munitions our vector down here and simply draw each you know each of them each bullet we've created the draw function for the bullet it would call the texture manager draw function and it will simply pass the the transform to draw it on the screen now to move the bullet we also have this function which simply calls our move uh, function of the of the bullets of each bullet inside of our vector and you know just handle all all uh, all bullet movement without any concern now we have this fire bullet which is actually where we create our bullets and you know set the start position and as you can see right here it takes the position the initial position of the vec of the bullet the vector so this is simply like a, like a constructor for our bullets because it takes the same parameters as the as the bullet so i just put this because i just wanted to have like a default value for that so it doesn't matter if we remove this or not so now if the munition size so if we we've, we've already created the munition uh, with the same the same amount of munition than our our vector can actually contain then we will stop creating but if we haven't we'll keep pushing new bullets inside so we'll keep pushing bullets and that's just how we will be we'll do that and up here this is where we actually gonna be uh, destroying our uh, recharging our, our 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 gun so for each bullet inside of our of our munition we want to check if the bullet is still alive or if he's still inside of the screen so and uh, as long as we have at least one bullet inside of the screen we can recharge the gun because we want to make sure all bullet has already been destroyed before recharging the gun and that's the whole idea about that so that's the reason we simply check okay is the bullet still it's is at least one bullet inside of the screen 
and uh, if we have one bullet inside of the screen then that's mean we still we have we still have to wait we can start recharging right now that's why the star recharge is equal to false but if we loop through and none of these um, bullets is no longer inside of the screen then the recharge will have the star recharge will have the value true and we'll be able to actually start the recharge down here that's why you see right here we say if star recharge and the recharge time is less than zero because we want to you know remember the hundred second the hundred you know that we've given so what we actually do here is we will decrease the size of this recharge time uh, every time we look through this function every time this function is called we'll you know decrease with one with one and when we reach a value a value smaller than zero then we know our reach our recharge time is rich then we can clear all the bullet that we have and we can shrink the size to zero to make sure we don't create something with with a size uh, different from zero and we reset the recharge time to uh, to 100 and now that this guy here has been shrinked to zero the next time the fire bullet will be called he will check if the size is smaller than count which is the case since the vector has been destroyed or clear so he will create new bullets and add them to the gun so if i actually go to my player and show you how i use this so player where is my player here so i actually added the you know the header file and i also created an object it doesn't have to be a pointer so it could simply be like a normal value without using the pointer but i just use it like that so if i go back to shooter.cpp so i can simply initialize my gun this is the number of bullets that it has so if i reduce this and i, I just want to show you how the gun will recharge itself so i'll simply keep shooting now you see i'm keep I'm, I'm still shooting but nothing is coming out you see but now it comes back when all the bullets which you know are destroyed now we we can recharge the gun and that's how i just you know wanted to do it so and uh, yeah that's the gun so here we have the gun draw bullets we need to draw all the bullets i already explained in the previous video uh, about how the gun was called and used here but i just want to show that so you guys can have an idea about that so we simply draw all the bullets and um, and here we have the move bullets so we simply move them right here and in this even function right here this is where we actually check okay if we push the g because we're actually using this key to shoot if we push this key and the gun is not recharging the gun is not charging actually then we are able to shoot so that's why we have this can shoot is equal to true and if can shoot is equal to true we can simply go down here and fire some bullets you know giving the position and the position giving the position of the bullet and the velocity now the position of the bullet is going to be defined according to the direction the player is facing you can see right here we have a vector let me kind of i have to click on this yeah we have this vector right here for the position of the bullet you see this depends on the size of the player so i decided to use the origin of the player so i just set a, a buffer to actually define the position of the bullet so that the, the bullet could start uh, you know right in the front of the player right here that's the id so and here the same thing on the y-axis so that it should be aligned with the gun that the player is holding so and now according to the state of the player so if the player is running if the player is crouching or jumping we want to set the value of that of the position of that bullet we want to kind of you know you know um, customize it to that state so that's why right here when you can see when the player is running we remove one pixel on the y-axis the same thing uh, regardless of the direction he's facing but you see on the x-axis we have to make sure the value should be uh, smaller than zero where have I done that so we have this this is D and this is A state running Ah, we actually did that up here 
So if the prayer is facing the normal direction, so we actually have this, if it is flipped horizontally, we have minus 10. So all we do here is we actually change the y axis value. So that's the idea. And we do the same thing right here. And we do that for all kinds of states. So this will simply depend on the size of your player. So this is not actually important. So that's that's not uh, an important uh, detail to this video. So just like that, and we kind of create our bullets and make them move and uh, we can actually have the result on the screen as you can see right here. So the idea was just to show you how this can work because as I said, it's a huge amount of work to actually write all this in a video it will take too much time that's why i'm just trying to explain and i always provide the source code on my patreon so if you want to get the source code to really get deep into this you can actually go and subscribe to my patreon and there you will get access to the source code and learn more for, from that so thank you for watching i hope i, have, I haven't spent your time for nothing i hope you learned something from this see you in the next video ciao